Welcome back everybody to the Super Duty Build. I have no idea what episode this will actually be, but this video is going to be about mounting the pitot tube on the Super Duty wing. Now just like everything else, there's a lot of thought about where to mount the pitot tube. And the first thing you'll notice is a difference in size between the Dynon pitot tube and the stock pitot tube from Zenith. If I put this in the same position, the, pitot, the, the mast from Zenith comes down about five inches, plus the pitot tube is about two inches lower than the mast, so it's quite a bit lower than the stock pitot tube. If I would mount this in the same position, then it's pretty much right in front of the strut, and it's just, you know, if you're wiping bugs or something off the strut, it's, it's just not the best position for it. I don't want it on the, like the outside of the strut, like way off to the, the outside of the plane, because then it's a lot easier for somebody to walk into it. So I want the pitot tube on the inside of the strut. So the best place I've come up with is basically, if I take where the stock pitot tube is mounted on my cruiser, and I come over to the other side of that rib, there's a rib right here, and I mount it right there, and then I come forward just a, a bit, that seemed to me to be the best position because it gives me a lot of room behind the pitot tube to wipe off bugs and clean the airplane and things like that without hitting the pitot tube. You know, if the pitot tube is right here, you're, you know, you just, there's no room in there for a rag and stuff like that. So I have mine mounted about right here. And, you know, there's a lot of different places you can mount it. So just because I mounted it here, don't think that that's where you have to mount yours. You may find a better place or a different place and that's just fine. But anyway, this is where I've mounted it and I will show you that process. Before we get into mounting the pitot into the wing, I guess I should take you through some of the components that I have. Now, all of this is from Dynon Avionics. My entire panel in the Super Duty will be Dynon, just like my cruiser. I'll talk more about that later, but yes, everything is going to be Dynon, so this is all Dynon equipment. And I have three separate part numbers here that I ordered from Dynon, and I will put those down in the description box below. The first one is the heated pitot tube assembly. Obviously, we have the pitot tube. It has the angle of attack sensor in it, and in this little electronic box here is the controller for the pitot heat. As you already saw, I have the mast for the pitot tube, and this just slides over the tubes like that, and then it comes down and mounts on here like that, and that's what the pitot tube will look like. And when you buy this, it comes with a template. You can see I've already mounted it or used it. And then I have the pitot installation kit, which comes with snap bushings, the actual static ports that go on the fuselage, a tubing cutter, zip ties, and then it has a whole bunch of these connectors. And it also includes three different lines or tubing. It has the clear for the static lines, and then you'll see later in the wing, there's a blue and a green one in the wing. Um, they're all exactly the same, but they're just different colors. And I'm not sure if I'm going to need all of these connectors, but I am going to make my Super Duty IFR capable. That's one of the reasons why I have a heated pitot tube. And I don't know yet if I will have dual AHARs or not. And I think if you do, you have to split off your pitot static lines to go into both of those AHARs. So I think this has all of the, the connections that I would need for that. So this is everything I'm going to need to mount the pitot tube. So now let's get to it. You will see in just a minute that I'm mounting the pitot tube right up next to a rib. So I cut off the right side of that template so it fits up next to the rib. The first thing I did was drill these two holes into the template because I need to mark those holes on the wing. I placed the template in the proper position and then I just used a Sharpie to poke through the hole in the template to put two little marks on the skin. After making two dots on the skin, I drilled out the front and rear hole. Now I need to trace the shape of that pitot tube mass on the skin. So in order to do that, I'm using a razor blade here to cut out that part of the template. You'll see in a second that once this is cut out, I'll have a nice hole to trace onto the wing. 
With the front and rear holes drilled in the skin, I can put the template back in place, use my trusty Sharpie to trace around the perimeter of this hole that I cut out, and then once I have the mark on the skin, I can then cut that out of the aluminum. Now I have that shape drawn on the skin to cut out, and I just put the pitot tube over that just to see how closely it matches. And it does look like it matches up pretty perfectly. So now let's get this cut out. Because there's going to be metal shavings, I just put some tape around the perimeter just to keep it from getting in into little crevices. I'm using a Dremel here and I'm just tracing around the inside of that line that I drew. Once it's cut out with this, I can clean it up with a file and sandpaper and I'll end up with a perfect hole that I can poke the pitot tube mask through. See all the shavings here? This is why I put the tape. It keeps them from getting lodged in between the rib and the skin. Now with the hole drilled, look how nicely that fits through. And I can't put it all the way through because it's hitting the table. So I did a little bit of a swapperoo and I put this wing over on the other wing stand where there's room below it. All right, so that wing used to be sitting on this workbench. Ooh, look, flaperons. But I've taken the wing that was on this workbench and I've moved it over there because that wing is done except for the plastic wing tip. And I've moved this wing over here because this doesn't have a top on it. So the pitot tube can now stick down from the bottom and not hit anything. So I think right now this is ready to mount. I will explain that hole next. All right, this is pretty much ready to go. So I can put the pitot tube in here. And now I have two other brackets. I have this one here that gets mounted under there. Then I have this one here that gets mounted here. And what that does is that kind of connects the, the pitot tube to the rib also. And when all that's riveted together, it makes for a really, really strong installation. All right, now let's look at this hole that I, I have here. This hole was made just like any other square hole. I drilled the corners for the round edge and then I cut the square out, but it was really hard to get in here with the Dremel. So it was kind of a rough cut, but as you can see, after I cleaned it up with a file and some sandpaper, it looks great. I made this access hole because we have to mount this pitot heat controller somewhere in the wing. You, and now here's the, the thing, you don't have to mount it in the wing. You can mount it in the fuselage, but Dynon really recommends that you mount this close enough to the pitot tube so that you don't have to cut and extend these wires right here. You'll notice these wires already have all the connectors on it, and the wires that come up from the pitot tube already have the connectors on it also that they just connect together. So. I originally was going to mount this behind the spar, but if I did that, then I'd either have to, I have to get these wires here in front of the spar. So I'd either have to cut a big enough hole in the spar to fit all these connectors through, or I could cut the connectors off, put the wires through the spar and put another connector on it. But then if I ever had to change the pitot heat controller, that would be kind of a problem. I'd have to cut the wires off again. So I mounted the pitot heat controller on the forward part of the spar. And what I did is you can see I have this access cover here. That's what will cover up this hole on the outside, of course. I'm going to mount the pitot heat controller to the access cover. So that's how it'll look just like this. So I can go from the bottom of the plane, I can put the, the access cover on, and then that puts the, the controller right here. If I can get my hands out of the way, I know everything's getting tight up here. I can put the, the controller right here. These wires here can go on this side of this rib and plug into the uh, pitot tube. And then these wires here I will actually have other wires coming through this hole in the spar. They'll come up here. I'll put connectors on both ends and then connect these wires together. So if I ever have to change this pitot heat controller, 
All I have to do is take the screws out of this access cover, lower this down through the bottom of the wing. I can unplug these wires from the pitot tube. I can unplug these wires from the wires that'll come through the spar. And then let's say I have to put a new one in. Well, all I do is I mount the new one to the, the access cover. I'll put this in the wing like this. These will plug right back into the pitot tube. And then I'll put the same connectors on here so that they will connect to the wires going through the spar to the back of the wing and back into the fuselage. So it's completely accessible and removable, mounting it that way. So you can see where the pitot tubes come through the spar here, though, and the pitot and static lines, I mean, they'll come up and connect to the, the pitot tube. I don't need those right now, so I just push those back. And then again, we have the pitot heat controller. I just made an access hole right here. I put nut plates around it. This will screw on to the bottom of the wing, just like that. This will sit right on top of the access cover and they will live happily ever after there. All right, so the next step I think is to rivet in the pitot tube mask. Once that's riveted in, I can push the pitot tube up through there and cut these tubes on the pitot tube to the correct length. I can hook those up to the pitot static lines. And then, uh, yeah, the, the controller, I don't have to mount until after the wing's done and painted. I just ordered the wire today because I didn't have enough wire to go from here back over to run through the wing. So I ordered wire there, but that obviously has to be routed through the wing once that's done, once the pitot tube is mounted, then I can start closing up all these skins. I can rivet this one, that one. I can put all the top skins on. And then this wing will be in the same position as that wing. It will basically be done with the exception of the plastic wing tips. So I guess there's nothing else left to do except rivet that thing in place. Before I mounted the pitot tube in the wing, I did have to cut these two aluminum tubes and flare the ends. And remember, before you flare the ends, to put on these blue AN fittings, because once you flare the tubes, you cannot put these on. Well, once I had the pitot tube ready to go, I put it in from the bottom, pushing all the wires and the tubes up from the bottom, and then pushing the pitot tube into the mast. This is what everything looks like poking out of the top. The tubes are very soft aluminum, so you can kind of bend them whatever direction you need. These little blue fittings come with the Dynon pitot kit. So those are threaded into the pitot tubes. And then after that, we can put on these other adapters that connect the blue fitting to the pitot tubes. All right, the pitot tube installation is complete. The only thing I have to do yet is run the wires through the wing for the, the controller that goes here. Obviously these wires will connect to the controller. This is the pitot line and this is the angle of attack line. All the connections are done there. As I'm gonna show on the bottom of the wing here in just a second, this L angle in, in the front part of the pitot tube I removed that one and added one that's about two or three times as long. And let me show you the bottom of the wing. All right, here's the bottom of the wing with the pitot tube. You can see the access hole here with the wires ready to connect. The pitot tube itself, 
And then if you can see, I've got a line of rivets that go from the, basically the rib here all the way out to here. And that's just an L angle that really stiffens this up like left and right going this way. So this is really stiff now in both directions, which is good. All right, the next thing I wanted to show you is just the approximate location here. If I use this two by four as a wing strut, it's kind of hard to approximate where it's gonna be, maybe just about like right there. And if that's the case, you can see where the pitot tube is. And I'm happy with that position. It's not right up against the strut. There's plenty of room behind it to get to the strut to wipe off bugs and stuff. I probably could have moved it back an inch or so. Uh, in fact, that probably would have been better. If you haven't mounted yours yet, I'd say, if you're gonna mount it in the same place I did, move it back about an inch or so. I think that would still work quite well. And in the back part of the wing here, you can see the final routing of the pedo line, which is the green one and the angle of attack line, which is the blue one. Everything is secured to the spar. And I put this plastic spiral wrap on the tubes just because, you know, these two could vibrate or something and, and sort of rub on the trailing edge skin. So I don't know if it's necessary, but it just gives the tubes a little extra protection. The tubes are secured all the way down. And in kind of this big space between that that uh, bracket and that bracket. I just kind of put this uh, tape around all of them just to hold them together, help secure them. Then everything will come out here to or go into the fuselage. Now, the only thing I have to do yet is run the two wires or there, there's three wires, I think from there. Uh, it's gotta go through the spar again. So I might have to drill another hole and then route those wires all the way down there too. And that's for the pedo heat controller. There's a positive, a negative, and then a signal wire for a light on the panel. And I think the light is for a status light for the pedo heat. So that's all done. I did order the wire from Steinair today. So once I get that wire, I'll route the wire. And then I still think I have more holes to deburr on these skins. <laughs> so. I'll get the skins ready to go. Once I route that wire, I can rivet on the skins and then this wing is pretty much done. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you on mounting the pedo tube. Tomorrow morning, I am off to work for a couple days and my family's coming into town for Thanksgiving. And after that, I'm going to get busy on the wing tips, finish up the flapper ons, and then I'll move it on to the fuselage. If you don't mind, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. There's a lot more content coming on the Super Duty and also some flying videos on the cruiser. See you next video.